வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் கைனமேட்டிக் செயின்ஸ் வி டேக் தி எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஆஃப் ரீச்சிங் அண்ட் கிராஸ்பிங் டு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் தி ப்ராடர் கான்செப்ட் ஆஃப் கைனமேட்டிக் செயின்ஸ் ரிமம்பர் கைனமேட்டிக் செயின்ஸ் ஆர் ப்ரெசன்ட் in other parts of the body for example the upper leg lower leg can be considered to be a two link kinematic chain broadly we can consider that also uh, the here we restrict our attention to the upper limb which is the upper arm forearm as a two link kinematic chain this analysis can be used to study other kinematic chains within the human body so this is an example right, to the study of kinematic chains so in this in this video we will be discussing kinematic chains what are degrees of freedom of a of a body of a rigid body then of a kinematic chain mobility of a kinematic chain and uh, open and closed kinematic chains degrees of freedom we have discussed this in some of the previous videos what is degrees of freedom the number of independent coordinates that are required to completely describe a given body so i have this body i have this object this object can translate upward or downward can accelerate upward or downward one degree of freedom can accelerate to the left or the right to the left or the right or can translate towards you or towards me this is something that you may not be able to see but i can show you i can do that for example right i can do that so these three translational degree of freedom right it can do that it can do that and then it can do that translation degree of freedom and then about each of these axes it can rotate for example about the axis antero posterior axis or the axis between you and me between the screen and uh, you like this about this axis it can rotate like this it can do it can do that rotation about the superior inferior axis about the superior inferior axis are the axis that goes from the top to the bottom it can rotate like this then about the axis that goes from left to the right about this axis it can rotate like this so there are three rotational degrees of freedom and then there are three translational degrees of freedom so the number of independent coordinates that are required to completely describe this body that we just now saw are six right you need six independent coordinates to describe this body in space because this has no other constraint i mean if you do not count the constraints that my hand holding by my hand is posing on it there is no other constraint it can rotate in any of the three direc directions it can translate in any of the three directions right this is for that body that is completely free but now if you have joints or uh, rigid bodies that are connected to each other that means that there are constraints about which movements can happen that means that the number of degrees of freedom will reduce and specific degrees of freedom will be curtailed some degrees of freedom will be present others will not be present something to keep in mind right so from a mechanism perspective if you are looking at degrees of freedom it is the number of inputs that are required to produce the output of the mechanism so if you have a mechanism how many inputs do you need to produce a particular output depending on the values of the input the output will vary of course but some particular specific inputs are needed for you to produce any output at all if you have one link of an n link kinematic chain grounded or attached that is called as a mechanism okay kinematic mechanism that is called as a mechanism so uh, when we discuss mechanisms this is the mechanism that we are looking at right so we just discussed the number of degrees of freedom that are required for an object in 3d space 
how many rotational degrees of freedom it will have and how many translational degree of freedom it will have. This is what we discussed, but suppose I am having the same object and I am saying it will move only in the plane of the screen, it will only move in this plane, it can only move within this plane say for example. That means, it can translate from left to right like this, it can accelerate, or decelerate, it can translate in this direction, it can translate up and down and it can rotate. These three motions are possible within this plane, any other motion for example, this motion is out of plane motion. So, if you are looking at planar movements right, the number of degrees of freedom that this uh, body will have is only 3, it has 2 translational degrees of freedom and 1 rotational degree of freedom. So, when we discuss kinematic chains, we are interested in one more concept which is mobility is the total number of degrees of freedom with which it may move when the sufficient number of inputs are being given. There is a formula for this, this is called uh, where m is the total number of degrees of freedom of the system of the mechanism are also called as mobility which is why it is called m and n is the number of rigid bodies or the links that are present in the mechanism and j is the number of joints that are present in the mechanism with only one single degree of freedom kinematic pairs. How many joints have only one single degree of freedom that yes. this equation describes the relationship between mobility and the number of uh, links and the number of joints with one degree of freedom kinematic pairs. This equation is called cuts backs equa equation. Right. Now, for a mechanism with one degree of freedom that means, it has mobility m is equal to 1, I substitute m is equal to 1. Many mechanisms that are under discussion will have only a single degree of freedom and uh, our analysis will also have a single degree of freedom. Where once you substitute m is equal to 1, immediately the number of joints and the number of links are related to each other as 2 j is equal to 3 n minus 4. Right. So, the number of joints and the number of links are related like this. This criterion is also called as Grubler's criterion, okay. the number of joints and the number of links. In this case, remember j still refers to the number of joints with single degree of freedom kinematic pairs. Then you have open kinematic chains and closed kinematic chains. For example, I can consider the arm system as an open kinematic chain. The end effector is open, it is not attached to any particular point or a, or a body or another body. So, one end of the chain mostly the distal end. So, this is in this case, this is the proximal end that is the distal end or mostly the distal end is free to move, it can move anywhere, not, not anywhere, it can move, it is free to move while constraint is up applied at the at other end. Whereas, my shoulder joint cannot move outside the shoulder, it is constrained to that, which is why this is a mechanism, this is a mechanism because this can be considered to be the ground for the purpose of this discussion, this is the fixed attachment or this is the ground to which this link is attached right or the humerus is attached to the shoulder joint for the purpose of this discussion. That means, this makes it a mechanism whereas, the end point is open which is why this is an open kinematic chain right. For example, like this. Then you have a closed kinematic chain in which constraints are applied both on the distal end also on the proximal end. Suppose, my hand is attached to the other hand and it can move anywhere it wants, but it should not remove itself from the other hand like this for example. Now, there is a constraint on this distal end also right. So, constraints are imposed on both hands or both ends of the chain right. This is a closed uh, kinematic chain right. So, for the purpose of discussion in the field of robotics this is a sister uh, discipline for us open and closed chains 
are frequently referred to as serial and parallel manipulators. So, this this open manipulators or the open chain is called as a serial link right as a serial manipulator whereas in this case this is these two are these two serve as a parallel manipulator. Okay. There are also constraints imposed by the body right. for example, limits within which the joint can move for example, the elbow joint can extend like this, but not really hyper extend can can do that to that. So, the range of movement is between that angle to that angle, but not beyond this for example, joint limits this is specific to the joint to the person changes as a function of age, but in almost all the cases there is no hyper extension in the elbow joint. So, there are some uh, rigid constraints right then muscle plus tendon length and then there are also other motion constraints like uh, for example, when you are walking when you are walking there is a restriction that is posed by the open kinematic chain which is the my foot can be considered as the distal end of an open kinematic chain, but it is constrained by the floor I am keeping my foot on the floor uh, there is a constraint because the floor is rigid my foot is not going down right? otherwise my foot if if for example, you place your feet or one of your foot in muddy water for example, your foot will go down or will get slightly pushed inside right. So, there is that lack of that constraint for example, if for comparison. Also while you are walking there are other constraints that come into the picture while you are walking there is the friction there is the force between the as in the the shear force there is force that is parallel to the ground and the foot right the frictional force all these things. Then there are the external constraints there is the wall there are obstacles or objects with which you are interacting and so on and so forth. So, there are constraints with which these kinematic chains operate. So, with this we come to the end of this video in this video we saw what is degrees of freedom and uh, how many degrees of freedom are there in a uh, free body or in a planar or a body restricted to moving within a plane uh, mobility of a kinematic chain what are open and closed kinematic chains. Thank you very much for your attention.